Alright, welcome back everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at Apple, given that they recently announced their new lineup for their flagship phones. And specifically I'm just going to be looking at the iPhone 13 Pro, but there were a range of product updates including the iPad, the iPad mini, and the iWatch. And so let's set the like goal for this video today. So the number of likes that I'm setting this week is 90, so 90 thumbs up. Just hit that button right now, and with that said, let's get into the video. And so with pretty much every topic that I look at, I always try and associate what it means for the given stock, and effectively whether we should be investing into certain companies or not. And so with WWDC 21 wrapping up a couple of hours ago, I mainly want to focus on the iPhone 13 Pro and just look into their specs. And so in terms of updates, we can see that we've had yet another camera update. There's been advances in low light performance, and there's also a cinematic mode as well, which allows you to focus shift on different objects during video shooting. And we have a 120 hertz retina display. So up until this point, we've only had the 60 hertz refresh rate. Now we are looking at the 120 hertz. It is variable, so during different usages, you'll see a range all the way up to the 120 hertz and so to accommodate that we have a larger battery which is actually supporting an extra 2.5 hours of playback time compared to the iPhone 12 Pro. So the downside there is that the phone is slightly bigger and in terms of the camera updates we do have a thicker distance as you can see on the screen and so we are continuing the trend which started to take place when the iPhone 11 came out so making the phone slightly wider with a larger and more performant battery. Then with the iPhone 12 we saw a reduced design and now we've increased some of the dimensions yet again. But this is the trade-off that Apple is constantly battling with, trying to make sure they can deliver on new features while making sure they're not reducing the performance overall. And in terms of performance we have the A15 Bionic chip, again supporting 5G, same as the iPhone 12. So with the brains of the device we always expect a new chip upgrade, it's the most important aspect of any phone out there. And Apple claims that the A15 Bionic is the world's fastest smartphone chip out there. And as you can already see from the designs, we have a very similar setup from that of the iPhone 12. Inside the box, we have a USB-C to lightning cable and the actual phone itself. So overall, I would say we have very minor upgrades here. The focal point, no pun intended, is the Pro Camera system, which supports all the different ranges, so teleport, wide, and ultra-wide. And arguably, most importantly, is the 120Hz refresh rate and it's something that iPhone users have been waiting for for a while. The Android counterparts have had these in a range of models, and so it's great to see that the 120 hertz is finally being supported. And so in terms of the stock price, we see similar patterns that generally emerge after the announcement of a WWDC event. So just looking at yesterday's performance, we can see that there was a sell-off in the market prior to the announcement of the new products. This generally happens when the market is just already trying to price in any of the expectations and then when it comes to the actual announcement we see this sell off. But overall Apple has been performing really well. This stock price has just been on an in-trend overall. Just a point to make out there so any iPhone users out there. Speaking for myself I brought my first iPhone back in 2014 and if we take a look at all the stock splits so the price point we have of $19. If we were to buy a single stock of Apple back in 2014 where we would have been paying around the $100 mark and so since then we've had a 5x stock split but regardless the actual price that a single stock was worth back then was at the $19 mark and so what I would say is that when I brought my $800 phone while I needed a phone and it served its purpose for for the duration that it was in use. The alternative argument is that if I put $800, and let's just say each stock is at the $20 mark, I would have purchased 40 shares in Apple. And with a price of $148, that $800 would now be worth close to $6,000, so $5,920. And so that is an increase of 7.4x. And so in a span of seven years, I could have 7.4x my money. And so I'm not saying that you should look at every type of purchase out there as a form of investment. There's definitely arguments out there. For instance, you need a phone just to trade in the stock market or some form of a device. But the point I'm making here is that if you are an iPhone 11 user or maybe an iPhone 12 user, you really want to consider whether you need to make the upgrade or not. And so there are times where I would argue that investing into Apple itself or even other companies out there is a much better form of return. So those iPhone 6 users out there, if anyone that's watching is old enough to have owned an iPhone 6, 
six, just have a think back and decide whether it was a sensible investment to buy that phone and whether or not you could have invested in the underlying company itself. And some people may think, well, prices in 2014, we're never going to see the stock price at these numbers ever again. And that is true. But the counter argument is that with a price point of $148, yes, it's an expensive stock to buy Apple. But let's say five, 10 years from now, there could be even more stock splits. The price point that we see could be much lower as a result, and we could see much higher values in the future. And if you are still buying Apple products, well, the stock price is just going to be performing anyway. So I would argue that buying the underlying companies is something that you want to keep in mind. I don't want you to do a Graham Stephan and treat every single purchase as a form of investment or a tax write-off, but definitely decide whether a given purchase is really necessary or not. And so thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely share the video to friends if you found this useful yourself. For those that haven't subscribed, new videos are posted each week. It just so happens that because of the WWDC event, I've decided to post this video early this week, but usually I release videos on a Friday. And so if you enjoyed this type of content and you haven't subscribed yet, then it'll be great to have you on board. And so thanks again, everyone. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.